Now, hopefully by now we should be familiar about expanding expressions. Okay, expansion. Now, I'm going to introduce a new term called factorizing. Okay, now factorizing is essentially the opposite um, to expanding. So what do we know about expanding? Well, we know expanding is when we kind of get rid of brackets and we kind of expand it into all these little terms. Okay, so going that way is expanding. So going from this form and multiplying it all out, expanding it to this form. Now the opposite to that, we're going to learn about factorizing today. Okay, now factorizing is the opposite to expanding. Well, we're going to go from this form and we're going to collect our factors and write it in a form like this. So this is my factorized form. Now, as you can see, from the word factorizing, we have the term factor, okay? So that's what we're doing when we're factorizing. We're collecting the factors that they both have A, and we're collecting the factor out there, and then writing the rem remaining terms like this. So again, this from this, from this stage to this stage, we call expanding, but from the reverse way, we're gonna call uh, factorizing. Okay, so they're two opposite um, terms. So, now that we know how, now that we know about factorizing, let's try and apply it to real um, questions. So if we take a look at um, the first question here, okay, we have factorize 2a plus 6. Okay, so how do we start? Well again, factorize means I want to take the common factor out. Okay, so I want to take factors out of these two that they both contain. Okay, now to do that, let's try and write this expression in terms of this. So again, these are the same things, but I'm going to write out all the factors like this. Okay, well, do these two have any similar or same factors? Well, yeah, they both have twos, in which case I can take a two out of these two expressions. Okay, so what am I left with? Well, I'm left with my a here and my three here. Okay, because if I take a two out and a two out, then a and three is left over. Then how do we finally write the answer? bracket, a plus 3, bracket. Okay, so again, this is my factorized version, where I factorized my factor of 2 out, okay, and I wrote the rest of my terms in, uh, in these brackets. Okay, so again, this is not expanding, we're doing the opposite of that, called factorizing. So let's move on to the next question. We have a plus, sorry, we have a, b plus a. Okay, we're going to factorize these, this expression. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to write out like this again, just so that we know what the factors of each term are. Okay. Well, if we have a look at these two terms, they both contain a factor of a. So I want you to take that out. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with b, and we're left with 1. Okay. And there's a plus in the middle. So intuitively, let's just write bracket b plus 1, and close the bracket. Okay, and we've essentially just factorized this expression. So again, it's not too hard, but it's very important things. Now question three says factorize a b plus a squared. So let's see how this one is going to turn out. I'm gonna multiply or I'm gonna list out all my factors like this again and see what they both contain. Well as you can see they both have um, a's. Okay, so I'm going to take that out. Well, what's left? Well, I have a B left and I also have an A left. And they're conjoined with a plus. So A outside of B plus A is my factorized version. Understand? Okay, now looking at question four, the terms are starting to get a little bit more bigger. Okay, they're a little bit more large. But we're still going to factorize uh, what we can. Now looking at the factors of um, each of the terms here, a times b times c, and what we have here. Now, what are the common factors? Well, yeah, they both have a's, and they both have b's, and they also have c's. So we're going to try and get the greatest amount that we can to factorize out. Okay? So, will they both contain a, b, c's? So let's put that at the front. And what's left? Okay, well, d, and that b is left. Okay? with a plus in the middle. So bracket uh, d plus b with the a, b, c outside of that bracket. Okay, so again, it looks kind of, you know, kind of complicated, a little bit big, but we're going to do the same thing and we should get the same, we should get a nice answer. 
Now let's move on to question number five. So we're going to factorize a outside of b plus 2 plus 3 outside of b plus 2. Okay, well, how do we actually factorize this when we have a lot of brackets and, you know, a lot of terms in here? Uh, there's a couple of approaches. The first thing that people may think they want to do is to expand everything and collect like terms and stuff. But no, there's actually a very simple way to do it. Now, if you, ever take, if you take a careful look, think of this as one term and think of this as one term and they both contain the factor of b plus 2. Okay? Now thinking of that way, oh, this question suddenly becomes so much more easier. Okay? So what do I mean? They both contain b plus 2, then let's factorize that term out. Okay? So like we factorize um, any common factor out, this is our common factor in this case. Okay, well, what's left? Okay, well, what's left? My a is left and uh, my 3 is left, right? Then I want to do the same thing, put a bracket, a plus 3. Okay, so again, we're not doing anything new, we're just doing the same thing, but it looks a little bit different because our common factor in this case is not a simple number or letter, it was actually this whole bracket. Okay, so that was their common factor. Okay, so once we take that out, we just write what's left, and that's how we factorize it. Okay, so this is a very nice trick that we can use. Now let's move on to question number 6. So we're going to factorize 22a plus 33b plus 44c. And you may start to think, oh, there you, you guys can start to think the, or start to see the factor in here. But again, I'm just going to expand everything out. Well, not really expand everything out, just list the factors like this. And indeed, they all contain 11s. So if I take the 11 out, then what's left? 3b plus, um, sorry. 2a plus 3b plus 4c is what's left. Okay, so we're just effect, uh, factorizing out 111. Now let's move on to question 7. So we have a lot of ABCs. Okay, now a nice way we can think about trying to do this question is to write it like this. You don't have to, but if it helps you, then I want you to write it uh, like this. So let's try and see what they all have in common. Well, they all have ABCs, okay, to the max. Like, ABC is the greatest common factor that they all contain. Now, we take an ABC out of here, we're left with one A. Take an ABC out of here, we still have one B left. Same thing here, we still have one C left. Okay, so this is how we factorize these equation, uh, this question. Now, looking at question 8, we have A squared, B squ uh, A squared, B to the power 4, and a cubed and b cubed. So what should we do here? Uh, well, if it helps you, let's again, let's try and write it like this and try and see what they both have, okay? And it looks like they both have, well, they both have a's, okay? But we're gonna figure out what is the greatest one. Okay, so let's try and get what they both have. So they both have the two a's, okay? And they both have three b's. Okay, well, what's left? Well, on this side, we have B is left, and this side we have a positive A is left. Okay, but we don't really, you know, algebra notation, we don't really write like this. We'll write the answer as A squared B cubed outside of uh, B plus A. Okay, and that is the factorized version in question 8. Now looking at 9, we have uh, four different terms. We have A, B, 4A, 3B, and 12. And on the first thing we did before is to think of, oh, what was, the f what was the common factor that they all have? But if you take a look at here carefully, not all of them have common factors. For example, A, B, and 12, they don't really have a common factor, do they? So what I want you to do is to factorize in pairs, okay? So I want you to factorize um, in different groups, okay? Hopefully you understand. Well, let's just see how we do it, okay? Well, I want you to factorize an A outside of these two. Or then we're left with b plus 4. And in this question as well, I'm sorry, this expression as well, I want you to factorize a 3. If I factorize a 3, I'm left with a b, and I'm left with a 4. Okay, but we're not done yet. We can even factorize further. Now we have two terms here, pretty much, and they both have a factor of b plus 4. Okay, well if they have a common factor of b plus 4, let's take that common factor out. So if I take that common factor out, what am I left with? A plus 
Okay, so B plus 4 outside of A plus 3 is my factorized version.